All right. We're okay. back. Another overtime uh, this week. Back in the Texas Chainsaw franchise with Texas Chainsaw 3D. Or it might just be Texas Chainsaw nowadays. I'm going to, the video is going to be Texas Chainsaw 3D. Because that's what it was when I watched it when it came out in 2013. But I see that now some places they've dropped the 3D and it's just Texas Chainsaw. If you watch this movie and it doesn't cut anything or edit nothing, and you don't see the 3D, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times they do shit just for the 3D. And you're yeah. like, what? Yeah. But uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D, uh, which in the timeline is supposed to be a direct sequel to the OG Texas Chainsaw from 1974. So everything we've covered up to this point, get rid of it. It's gone. <laughs> this is... This is supposed to be the direct sequel to that. Uh, and yeah. This, speaking of, you know, we uh, when we did Next Generation, I told you how in that one, that was near the bottom of people's list. Uh, and we both agreed. That was, I still think it's probably my number two Texas Chainsaw so far. Uh, this one is also near the bottom of many people's list. And you said something in Discord when you were watching it, where you said, uh, I feel like I should hate this movie, but it's got a lot of good shit in it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff where it's like, this movie was horrible. Yeah. And then something would happen, I'd be like, well, all right. Yeah. And then something else happens, and I'm like, oh, here we go. And like, <laughs> it was, it, oh, man. Like, uh, yeah. I think of an analogy. You ever, like, use the restroom and you flush? And the little dookie won't go down, and it just keeps rising to the top. That's this movie. Yeah, like it's shit, but man, it's it's rising to the occasion every yeah. time. I just keep flushing, and it's like not the day. Yeah. So, what but, uh, Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I agreed with you. I don't think it's the worst. I don't think it's the worst at all. Uh, I'm gonna give it a five. I I think it's passable. There's some cringy shit in there. It's not great by any means. But I don't think it's the worst Texas Chainsaw movie. So, uh, Tyler, what's your ranking for this one going to be? Oh, and I don't know how you'll do this because I didn't do it, but I'm just assuming. Uh huh. I'm going to give this movie a 7. Oh, my God. If, if you can watch it in 3D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I think if I could watch this in 3D with, like, the glasses and everything, it'd be great. Hmm. But uh, I think a five is decent. Like yeah, that's a good score. Yeah. Like, uh, but keep in mind, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this franchise. So like, they didn't really alter the course all that much. So you know, my five might be y'all's four, to be yeah. honest. But it's just my. You know what? Never mind. I'm giving this a four. Okay. <laughs> and I'll tell you why in all a right. couple of seconds after we do spoilers. Yeah. All right, well, hey, spoiler warning. For Texas Chainsaw 3D, we're going to ruin everything about it. So you've been warned. Also, before we start, uh, I was just thinking the other day, like, uh, I was listening to some podcast when I was editing it. You know, we came in and we were like, uh, we were like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. And like three and four and two or whatever. And then I started thinking, I wonder, like, if new people come in and they hear like a four. And they're like, oh, man, this movie's really good, thinking we do, like, a five-point system, you know? <laughs> and then it's like, no, we, we do a ten-point, but, uh, anyway. The we, run off, we do a 14-point system, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, anyway. No, it, it's ten. It's ten. We do a ten-point system. Yeah. So, the movie starts off with basically, you know, showing that, hey, this is supposed to be right after the first movie took place which is you get the highlight reel from the first one which is dude getting fucking hammered and fucking uh frank it, it, it scenes from the original it's like all the kills yeah it's it's really good it like takes you back yeah you like, get a voiceover it, of what's supposed to be sally being like they're crazy they tried killing my friends you know talking to police or whatever or, or they did kill my friends they didn't try because yeah, right. she yeah but uh yeah it's real weird because I told you, I, I'm pretty sure all of it was from the original movie, except the one scene of Drayton jumping up and clapping. And they use Bill Mosley for that. 
And I don't know, because that's in the movie. I don't know why they didn't use the one scene of Drayton doing it. The only thing I can think of is because they knew they were going to go into where Bill Mosley was going to be playing Drayton in a couple seconds, and they wanted it to look more like, yeah, you know. It would look so off. Well, I mean, I know we're not, we're, we're fans of Bill Mosley. That being said, uh, the original guy was a lot better. Yeah. Well, weirdly enough, yeah, so Bill Mosley. Back on the podcast, we were just talking. I think this is his fifth appearance on the podcast. We learned during all this, he might be tied now for first with someone I didn't even think was that many, but Jamie Lee Curtis, who also we went through, is in five movies we've we've done. And ironically, I do not like. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he plays he plays Drayton Sawyer in the first like ten minutes, the cold open in this movie, uh, and weirdly. If you go back to Texas Chainsaw 2 where he's Chop Top, I think his impression of Drayton is better when he's Chop Top than when it yeah. is. Maybe it's because it's, he's doing it so over the top in the uh, in fucking Texas Chainsaw 2 where he's like, "Oh, look look what you you did it all, you know," and he's doing yeah. the whole thing. But this one he's trying to play more of a like in per in a grounded Drayton. And uh you know, I'm all for Bill Mosley and it makes sense to have him be Drayton in this, you know, I think, uh, I can't remember the guy's name who played, uh, Drayton Sawyer, but he had passed by this point. Uh, so I like how they kind of kept it in the Chainsaw family, having him play him, but, uh, he, he wasn't a great Drayton, but then again, I mean, he's only in it for 10 in minutes, so, not even. yeah, so it ain't that bad, but yeah, it starts off with a bunch of, bunch of scenes from the first one. And then it cuts to the aftermath, which is Sally has gotten away, and now uh, the cops are pulling up, and they're like, send out the boy, you know? And uh, fucking Drayton is like, is like, he's family, we're not sending him out. And then the one guy's like, ah, send him out, he's simple anyway. Which is fucked up, because uh, that guy sitting in the chair is Gunnar Hansen. Who obviously, is that who it was? Yeah. I, who, I was trying to figure out who he was in there. Who is the OG... Uh, Leatherface. Uh, by the way, also another fun thing is that spot he's sitting where he's like, ah, send him out anyway, is the spot where in the first one, Leatherface sits down after killing uh, the first two. And he's like, you know, he's rocking back yeah. and forth or whatever. And I was like, oh, shit, that's cool. But uh, also, I got to say, and don't take this the wrong way, anyone. But, you know, we talked about, so Gunnar Hansen, he played him in that one. Uh, the first one, and then he never plays him again. And we talked about in Texas Chainsaw 2 how uh, he wanted more money or something to do, and they didn't, they couldn't meet agreements for him to play him or whatever. And I, I'll be honest, I don't, I haven't looked that much into Gunnar Hansen's career. I don't know what much else he did besides he Leatherface. Was, he was a wrestler, right? No, I'm sure he no, was. That's that's Michael Myers. Remember. You said, every time we do text chainsaw, you're like, he's the wrestler, right? And it's like, no. I'm <laughs> pretty sure a dude was a wrestler. No. You're thinking of Stan Hansen. <laughs> Listen. Anyway, but, uh, and so, yeah, I read this thing where he just talked about how prior films, he's been approached to do it, but they've never reached, like, agreements on what he should be paid for it. And after reading some of it, and then hearing, because we talked about it in the reboot movies, how there was a weird thing on... This movie is what sparked it, the the rivalry between him and the guy who plays him in the, the reboot movies from the mid-2000s, is he is ta he's basically talking shit about the dude from the mid-2000 movie. And he's like, this is how he closed the door. And he's like, eh, you know, and then he's like, here's how I did it, and slams it or whatever. And watch it, I kind of... And I won't go that, but... I, I kind of think Gunnar Hansen might be the problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily the studio or whoever. I think dude might just be a little, a little hard ass or something. You know, I don't. I don't. It's, it's weird to say that because I don't want to. He by far is the best Leatherface. I, I mean, when I think of Leatherface, I think of that first movie. That's Leatherface to me. But. Person wise, I don't dude kinda gives me weird vibes. Let me ask you a question. Okay. And this will sink into it, I promise. Alright. <laughs> but do you think a cover song will ever be better than the original? 
Yeah. So that's kind of the argument here, right? To where yeah. you have the original that everyone's like fan boy, fan girling out over or whatever. Podcast brought to you by Deer Park. And then you have the... Uh, it's like, actually tap water. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have, like, you know, the, the guy who's who's playing the part is Leatherface, uh-huh. but isn't, right? Like, yeah. The, the Leatherface in um, the last one we watched, uh-huh. not this one that we're reviewing now, but the one before this, yeah. was pretty solid. He had the size. Yeah. He had everything. He just wasn't in the movie enough. Yeah. You know, but that's not him, right? Like, yeah, honestly, that, yeah, that Leatherface very much is kind of like the Rob Zombie Michael Myers, where yeah. Rob Zombie Michael Myers is very much the most intimidating Michael Myers out of the series. But I, would, who I was would, that guy. Uh, remember? fucking, I remembered it when we were talking about it, but I don't. But he's he's a wrestler, but he's fucking huge. But I wouldn't say he's the best Michael Myers. Because for me, Halloween Part 2, Dick Warlock is the best Michael Myers. Same thing going with this, you know, this series. is the, the prequel movies or whatever in the 2000s are by far the most intimidating Leatherface to me. But they're not the best Leatherface. So oh, we're we're totally getting off track. Here. Yeah, we haven't even really dived into the movie. If yet, you could but... pick anyone to play Leatherface, who would you pick? I have the perfect, I know who I would pick to play him. 100%. I would pick uh, 1997 Mick Foley when he was doing the Mankind gimmick. Because he was already doing the, like, <laughs> like he was doing the high yeah, but screams. He was a little too uh, robust. Yeah, but sometimes a nice chunky boy leather face is good. I'm, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. When he does have, like, extra girth, uh-huh. he seems more like a backwoods, hillbilly, yeah. like, country guy, right? Like... Sometimes they they make him this just juggernaut or whatever. Uh-huh. That being said, I'm I'm going with Batista. So no, yeah, <laughs> which is exactly what I just was, you know. But yeah, that guy from Rob Zombie's, uh, the one where he gets struck by lightning and at the end and he has superpowers. I guess that's Halloween. Isn't that the one where he comes back from the dead and everything's crazy? From Rob Zombie's second Halloween movie, the one I didn't watch. Well, you watched it, you just didn't get to the ending. Yeah, that guy should just play everything that has a mask on. Oh, like, yeah. He is the, like, perfect body type. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. It would be perfect for for Leatherface is uh that random guy who used to play for the Rams. I can't remember his name. Jared Allen. Vikings. Well, no, didn't he go to the Rams at the end? Maybe, but... I mean, season, I wouldn't like, call him a Rams player. Well, yeah, but yeah. anyway, sorry. I, I a, yeah, whenever... Scoop. This is a weird thing, because whenever we get into the Friday 13th movies, like, Jay, what you said is, like, I don't know if that guy would be good for Jason, though. Weirdly enough. Like, Jason has such a weird... But mostly, I mean, the dude's fucking grotesque whenever they take his mask off or whatever. Oh, dare you. I'm sorry, but, you know, like... He um, has a disability. Here, whenever we get to it, uh, which is... Uh, most people's favorite Jason is Kane Hodder, um, which makes sense. I mean, that dude was in... He's in my my favorite... He's, in, he's Jason X. He was in 7 through X, I think, so he was in four of them. Um... But isn't the guy who plays Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween, isn't the guy the same guy who did Sabretooth in the X Men movies? Yes. Isn't that the Yeah, yes. I just can't remember his name. Yeah. I just remembered that's who it was. Anyway, sorry. Um but weirdly enough, the the Freddy versus Jason Jason. And I don't remember the guy's name. Um but something about him is whenever we watch that movie, he had the perfect body for what I think Jason is for some reason. Where he wasn't... I mean, he was huge, but he was, like, big, and he didn't look like he was in good shape. He was just big, you know? Yeah. And, like, it was the way his... his fit, you can't have too long of a neck. I There's uh, 2009 Friday 13th, the reboot one. Uh, that's also a favorite of mine in the series. 
but that guy's neck is way too long for Jason whenever we get to it. His neck looks it's weird looking. So body types on these guys <laughs> Body types are, are strange. It can make or break like a uh, a character, weirdly enough. But anyway, back to the movie. It's overtime. We can go anywhere we want. But uh, <laughs> but I mean, this is an argument that we could have for hours. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so yeah, the cop cop is there. He's like, send out the boy, and finally they agree. And the cop's like, all right, cool. I'll be waiting. You yeah. know. And they miss the uh, the actor, but he's wearing a really bad wig. Yeah, we're because an afro or something. Because they have to like, age them later, and so <laughs> you're, yeah. Um, and so then Drayton goes to get Leatherface, and I don't know what they did, but the pretty woman mask in this looks terrible. Like, yeah. was it just like I don't know if they just rushed it or they didn't spend that much time because it wasn't going to be on screen that much? But Leatherface in the opening looks bad. Like, his pretty woman mask looks terrible. I don't know what so, the deal was with it. I don't know what the budget for this is. You probably have it right I now. I do. Or but the reason I took a point off for this movie and gave it a 4 instead of a 5 is that I feel like every mask in this movie is fucking horrible. Yeah, it's not the greatest. They make him look like a goblin or something. Yeah. Like, in the beginning, you know, in the the first mask, whatever. Uh -huh. I was like, "What is this? He looks like a like he found a football skin out in the yard and yeah. just made it into Weird, a mask." Weirdly enough, I think if you go to like a uh, a fucking spirit Halloween or something, the mask in this movie is the mask that you would see the most at stores. And I don't know if it's because it's the easiest to make, or or what, but like, because I know whenever I go, I have a picture, an old picture of me. Where I found this mask when I was at store and I'm wearing it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but, but yeah. I, I, what was that face again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the budget, by I, the way, since you asked, is $20 million. Uh, made a box office of $47 million. I'm going to be honest. And uh, I talked, I went in a little bit of depth of this in Discord, but I'll spare you all a lot of the messages and things I said. The main actress in this. Alexandra Daddario is amazingly hot. I like, think everyone can agree on that. I was literally watching this and I paused it and I was like, God damn, I'm not going to be able to like really watch this movie and pay attention and everything. Like she is so stunningly I hot. Remember, like, it's distracting. I want to say, so I think she was a guest judge or something on that go big show shit that they have on TNT that Burt Kreischer does the hosting of or whatever. And he was telling a story about, he was like talking to her. And then in the middle of it, he was like, do you know, like how distracting you are? Just like your yeah. eyes. <laughs> and, like, and he was like, she took it really well. Cause thinking back to it, he's like, that could have got me in some trouble. But, uh, but yeah, so, which I, he, we talked about a little bit. She's in Baywatch. She's one of the stars of the Baywatch movie that came out with The Rock and the uh, Zac Efron. I first knew her from True Detective, where she was banging Woody Harrelson. That's one of my always favorite, my... favorite season of a TV show ever. Yeah. But we'll have to wait and do that one later. You mm. know, I don't know if it's really horror or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to say, amazingly hot. I don't know if she was really good as an actress. <laughs> like, I don't think I, anyone in this was good. I think I disagree with you. I think she was the best performance out of this movie. Now, to she be fair, yeah, I don't yeah, think like, she had that much competition, but I thought she did an alright job in this movie. Now, she does have to deal with, uh, we'll get to the end of the movie, when uh, she has the infamous line, uh, which is, uh, do your thing, cuz, as she tosses Leatherface the chainsaw, which is like, ooh. Well, let's, let's talk about that scene. Let's talk, I mean, even though we're skipping to the end of the movie. Yeah, that's all right. the podcast. But uh, let's talk about that scene. Okay. So you're saying it was cringe? Yeah. And you're like, ooh? I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, I was the opposite. Like, I don't get me wrong. The delivery, everything was bad, right? Uh -huh. Even the chainsaw throw was kind of lackluster. Yeah. But I was like, go get him, buddy. <laughs> you know? Like, See, and then yeah, you that's... the worst fight I've ever seen in a horror movie. Yeah. That's a weird but, thing too that we'll get into more is that exact reaction the go get him, buddy. We'll we'll get into yeah. that. But also, I saw that Alexandra Daddario talked about how she didn't want to do the do your thing, cause because she felt it was too silly. 
And then the producer told her, hey, the entire movie's supposed to be silly. And so she was like, all right. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, so they, they're like, we're going to send out fucking, fucking Jed. Uh, but then the fucking townspeople show up. And they're like, ah, and they just start throwing. We're getting back to the movie, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they just start throwing Molotovs in and fucking burning down the house. Uh, they just start shooting up the family. Uh, you on, get I gotta, okay. I gotta make a statement here. As a hillbilly guy who lives in the South, uh -huh. our aim is so much better than what these guys portray. Oh yeah. Because everyone's aiming at everyone, and then you have a shootout that lasts ten minutes, and I think they shoot Grandpa. Yeah, you get like one shot. The window. That's it. There's yeah, two bullets that hit. Yeah, uh, you get one shot. Grandpa getting shot. Uh, fun fact: that was uh, John Dugan, who played him in the original, back to uh, reprise his role as Grandpa. Believe it or not, Tyler. Uh, he did not have to put on as much makeup to portray the character this time <laughs> as he did when he was 22 or whatever playing Grandpa back in the day. Was um, he holding a hammer in this one? Yeah, he was holding the hammer in it falls. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they shoot up the family and uh, they kill everyone and the sheriff's like, it's on you. Uh, hurt it. Hurt. Hurt. Uh, Kurt. Kurt? I think his name is Kurt. C U R T. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Kurt and, Hartnett or something. And the guy's like, I can't Parker. escape justice, sheriff, or whatever. No, and, he quotes the Bible. He goes, and I really lie. I can't dodge the good book. Yeah. And so the sheriff leaves, and they're all celebrating and going through the fire. Uh, and then in the middle of it, this one guy is checking out like this uh, little area where they have cars and shit, presumably. Uh, from their victims, because, you know, we always get the shots of all the cars that they have. Uh, and they find this one lady there holding a baby who's from the Sawyer family. And she's like, help. And the guy's like, ah, I'll help. Give me give me the kid. And he takes the kid. And he's like, all right. And kicks her in the fucking face. <laughs> and he leaves. And he goes shows his wife. He's like, I got a baby. You know, you wanted a baby. And they're like, oh, good. Meanwhile, keep in mind, this is like an open fucking field. And this baby is just wailing and bawling and shit. Uh, I call bullshit that none of these people 50 feet away would hear, wouldn't hear this baby. Just like, wah, wah, you know? But, uh, you know, regardless. Uh, so they kidnap this baby. As they kidnap the baby, you get another shot of the lady laying there. And it zooms in on this S necklace that stands for Sawyer that she was wearing. Which will come back in the future when now... What? Do you think it's kidnapping? I mean, the mom was dead. Like, she literally died there. Yeah, she that boot was supposed to be her death, but, uh... But, like, so... And there's no one else there to take care of this kid. Yeah. So, I mean, it is kidnapping because the guy... It is lady. kidnapping. I mean... But there's no one there to take care of the baby. Well, so, yeah, like... but I think that you're supposed to, like, tell authorities, hey, <laughs> here's this kid... <laughs> Did they have that in the 60s? I don't know. Well, 70s, please. Well, I mean, yeah, but, I, like, back then, it, you know, yeah. who knows? But, It'd be normal. But, yeah. But yeah, well, I mean, still kidnapping. Kidnap, yeah. But yeah. anyway, and then you go to the present day, which uh, this is where a lot of people have their main issue with the movie, is you go from back then, which uh, I believe the first movie took place in 72. I, the movie came out in 74, but I think the incident was supposed to take place in 72. Uh, where you have baby, and now it's present day, which presumably is 2013 or 20, 2011, 2012, whenever, you know. Yeah. Uh, and the baby has grown up and is Alexandra Daddario. Now, <laughs> super hot. Now, keep in mind, I think Alexandra Daddario, when she made this movie, was maybe 22, 23. And she's supposed to be playing a uh, a forty year old at that point uh, woman, <laughs> so uh, age doesn't really <laughs> match up. But you know, we'll we'll look over that part. Would you have gotten like an older lady to play her? I mean, because you said yourself that she was the highlight of this movie, like well, the best actress in the movie. Yeah, well, I wouldn't look know past that kind of. I wouldn't have gotten a fucking older actress. I would have just made the timeline make more sense have this take place in the 90s or something you know 
and yeah. then have like a reason for the grandma to die. You know, well, to be fair, they don't. I mean, we know when the movie was shot and when it released, yeah. but there's nothing saying that this movie didn't come out in '09 or you know '04. Right? Like, yeah, I'm trying. I can't like remember. Even the cop cars are kind of. I mean, it's hard because this movie came out nine year, you know, ten years ago, nine years ago. So like, even those cop cars looked a little fuddy, right? None of them were like really nice, or they yeah. didn't look. Yeah, but like, I mean, we'll get into it. There's the scene with the cop on his fucking phone. Yeah, but and he's live streaming like the. <laughs> They might have had that in no, like, 04, right? Like, yeah, but there would have been a lot like, of... All right, I'm... The, <laughs> like, well, it should have been that anyways. Cause it's it's sh- country, dudes, like, yeah, and yeah. dudes underground in the fucking... Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, anyway, so now, uh, baby grown up. Uh, this is when I also remember the Trey songs was in this movie. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Trey songs. Oh, is that who that is? I don't even know who that is. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it was the boyfriend. It's the boyfriend, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, but anyway, you're like, I, you only spend like 10 minutes in the movie before a uh, homegirl gets a random letter that says, hey, your grandma's dead. Uh, and her Trey songs is like, I didn't think you had a grandma. And she's like, I didn't either. And then immediately it cuts to her with her kidnapping parents, and somehow she's she's figured out like immediately. She's like, hey, "Why didn't you just tell me I was adopted or something?" And her dad, they have him painted as like the super stereotypical piece of shit, where he's in boxers, like a wife beater, and socks where his toes are sticking through, and he's got a beer can in his hand, and he's like, "I wish we would have kept you there," and you know all this shit. And they, uh, they really painted the parents as like the whitest trash. Yeah. Like the mom was holding an unlit cigarette the whole time. And like, uh huh. It was like, we don't like our parents. You know, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. And so, and then she's like, well, I'm going to go, you know, because the grandma had left her, uh, her estate. Pa- estate. Yeah. Also, a, f- a fun little touch I thought is you, when Trey Songs comes home. Uh, to where uh, Alexandra Daddario is, he's like, I thought you're making art again or whatever, and it's the bone art, and I was like, yeah. ah, because she's a sawyer <laughs> making that bone art, and uh, but I thought that was a fun, fun little touch. Uh, but yeah, so they're they're gonna go fucking go to the grandma's estate. Uh, fucking, they bring along Alexandra Daddario's friend. And her new boyfriend. Uh, well, I guess it was Trey Song's friend too, right? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> um, kind of. Yeah. And uh, so they're like, we're going to make a road trip out of it. And then they started driving. And they're like doing this, like, dance into the song. And I was like, I bet you this is Trey Song's fucking song that they're listening to on the radio. It was not. But they do have a Trey song song in here. It's when he's playing pool later on in the movie and they have like rap playing. It's Trey songs playing. I was like, motherfucker. Uh, but then they go to the gas station, spend, get some gas, get some snacks. They're like, all right, let's go. They pull, like they get, maybe hits the gas for a second and they hit a guy and they make it look like they hit him like as hard (laughs) as you could possibly hit someone. Uh, and they're like, oh, shit, we're sorry. He's like, ah, I should sue, but I'll settle for a piece of that jerky. Uh, and then he ends up fucking, you know, convincing them to let him take a ride. He's going to New Orleans, I think. Or are they yeah, going to New Orleans? They are, but they're stopping off in Texas. Yeah, to, yeah. And so they're like, oh, we'll give you a ride. And he's like, okay, you know. this. Is <laughs> also, when you get a shot of them driving down the highway, and it plays a like, God will fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I linked that song to you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is my new jam. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? Um, and they get they get to the mansion, the state. You find out it's a mansion. I guess you don't know it yet, but it's a big gate. And they're like, oh, shit, you know. Uh, this dude pulls up who, he was like the grandma's lawyer or something maybe. I don't remember what his title was. Yeah, he was grandma's lawyer. Okay. And he gives her all this paperwork. He tells her the gate code, which is uh, 0819. And originally I was like, oh, it's the date of the first movie, you know? 
Uh, but then I realized that it was the date after the movie because the movie is August 18th. And so 08, 19 is when the, the whole family got slaughtered. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, that makes sense. Uh, this only is also, reason, what's up? Only reason I remember that is because my birthday is the 18th. Yeah. And I'm always like, oh, my, happy on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is also when you get a scene where he gives her these papers and he's like, all right. Your grandmother wrote you a note in here. You really need to read it. And she goes, okay. And he goes, make sure you read that note. And she's like, okay. And then he's like, like getting in. It? He's like getting in the car. And he's like, read that note. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert: She never reads the fucking note until the very end of the movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they go to the mansion. Uh, they're walking around. They're like, man, this place is the shit. You know. Uh, they do a couple partying and playing pool, and then, uh, I are they just going to the store or something like They're that? They're going to get steaks. To yeah, because homegirl, the, the friend's boyfriend is like a cook, and, uh, he's like, you guys gotta let me cook for you tonight and shit. So they, they're going to buy steaks. The hitchhiker dude is like, ah, you know, this is a cramped mission if I go, I'm just gonna hang back. I'll start unpacking. So they leave this guy <laughs> that they've only known for... A few hours, maybe, since they hit him at a gas station. Alone in the mansion with the fucking the set of keys and everything. And, uh, you, you know, they're like, man, he's a Boy Scout, you know. And so they drive away. And he's like, yeah, I'm a real fucking Boy Scout, all right. Immediately starts looting. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's taking yeah, he's taking all the fine china, all the fucking, you know. Like all, candlesticks and shit. Yeah. That? Like, I thought that was a thing people did in, like, the 30s. Yeah, and so he's taking all this shit. Uh, and then as he's walking around in the kitchen, um, he notices, which I don't know how no one else noticed it because it was very obvious, this big crease in the wall, which is clearly like a push open and it leads to a, uh, a fucking, it goes downstairs. And originally watching it, I was like, well, this isn't how the house was, you know, because then you get down there and you you see the sliding door and all the shit, yeah. and I was like, man, this was, they just walked in and the sliding door was there. I forgot that at the beginning of the movie, the house gets fucking burned down, like, that, yeah. it's gone. So this is completely rebuilt. Um, so, you know how I always say in these movies that it pisses me off because this is like a mansion? Uh-huh. I was like, how do these rednecks have, like, such a nice house, whatever. This one makes sense other than the fact that they never talk about where this lady got a kajillion dollars from. Yeah. Yeah, they never explain that. They never explain, unless I'm, where she was when yeah. this fucking slaughter went down. They never explain how Leatherface manages to escape from, you know, being burned alive in the house and being able to hide somewhere. Um... So was this the mom from this? It was the same mom later on you see her. From one of the last ones we saw, isn't it? The one with... No. Uh, um... The lady that plays the grandma is Sally from the original. Oh, it is? Yeah, and she's making like I a thought, cameo. I thought it was uh, the lady from... The one with the drill instructor guy. I can't remember his fucking name. Oh, no. He's dead now. Yeah, you're talking about Luda Mae Hewitt? Yeah, no, yeah. it ain't her. That's who I thought it was. My yeah. bad. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, when we get to, yeah, Sally plays the grandma when you get a little, uh, note, or thing of her writing the note. Right? Yeah, when she Which, finally reads the fucking note. Yeah, I'm not sure, also, this jump ahead real fast, I'm not sure if it's her that, uh, homegirl sees dead in the chair at one point. I don't know who the fuck that I don't was. know, yeah, I don't know if that was supposed to be the grandma or what, but that was just, but anyway. Just a random dead person in a chair. Yeah. But anyway, dude finds this fucking basement. He goes down there. He's like, I got you now, you old bitch. He's like, I'm going to get this, uh, you know, the stash or whatever. Uh, and this is when he finds Leatherface's little sliding door. And he's like, what the fuck? Because in front of the, the door is a plate and, like, eating food. And, like, yeah, it bones. looks like milk or something, maybe, in a cup. I don't know. It was... That's but... Leatherface milk. You yeah. That. yeah. You that is extra thick and chunky. Yeah. So he he's trying to break into it because he's convinced you know something's back there and he breaks his pocket knife and he's like fuck and he goes and he's like I'm not giving up on you bitch you know so he goes to a toolbox and he's like all right here here I go and he gets a screwdriver and as soon as he gets up Leatherface is there and fucking hammers him in the face and you're like oh shit and uh, 
you do get one shot of Leatherface on top of him, and you get you see like impact of the hammer hitting the guy's face, uh, and so the hitchhike is dead. <laughs> so in the beginning of this, they did the whole hitchhiker thing, uh-huh. and every movie we've seen so far, the hitchhiker is a member of the Sawyer, yeah. right? Like. And when they leave that guy alone, he's like, uh, he like gives a look back to him when he's carrying the bags. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh yeah, he's going to get things going. Yeah. And this is like the first time he wasn't in on it. Like, yeah. I mean, he's still a thief. <laughs> but, yeah. Like, so, you know, still don't trust hitchhikers, guys. Yeah. yeah. Still, like, um, also, while all this was going on, this is why, because at the grocery store, we find out that, uh, Trey Songs and Homegirl's friend had banged once. Apparently, he was fifteen kamikaze shots in or something. He said something crazy. And he's like, yeah. "Listen, that was once. We ain't doing it again." And she's like, "Okay, fine." She grabbed his dick, and he was like, "Whoa, keep your hands off my shit," you know. Uh, so why do why do people feel the need to exaggerate about these shots and stuff? Which, why couldn't it have just oh. been like, like why can't like, man, listen, I had like four beers in three minutes, you know, like why yeah. does it have to be, I had 78 shots of, you know, yeah, it's like, come on, man, just be like, yeah, I had a few too many, right? That's yeah. all you have to say. Yeah. I, yeah. It's just be like some guy yeah. talking about, you know, I, I played a Uno drinking game once, took 22 shots of Southern Comfort. <laughs> Apparently you should have slept with my best friend. Yeah. Which is you. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like but, I'm jacking my own dick. Yeah. Anyway. But anyway, so that guy's dead. They get back. They're like, motherfucker, he played that smooth. He robbed, <laughs> he fucking robbed our shit, you know? And so then in the middle of it, they're like, ah, who fucking cares? And they just sort of get over it, you know? Uh so you get a couple of dudes playing pool, uh, homegirls out back smoking a joint, dudes cooking steaks. Alexandra Daddario is walking around the house. We haven't mentioned yet, she has a birthmark of an S that's like above her fucking, her, on her chest. Uh, yeah. That they had mentioned once, because her and Trace Hollins were about to bang. He's like, I love your birthmark, or whatever. Uh, as she's it's walking, like, yeah, as it's she. It's not really a birthmark, it's like a burn. That well, she doesn't know necklace. that. Yeah, put on. Her. That's what she's, yeah, because then she's yeah. walking around and starts seeing all these pictures of the Sawyer women with the S on, uh, you know, S medallion or whatever. She even finds a picture of her mom. I don't know, I don't think she knows that's her mom when she sees that, though, but uh, with the S. And so then she starts being like, oh shit, what the fuck, you know? Um, then, as Homeboy is cooking, he discovers the. Uh, the hidden door hatch to the basement. And he's like, oh shit. So he goes walking down there. And as he's down there, he sees uh, the hitchhiker dude's bag and shit. And he's like, oh, Josh or whatever that dude's name was. He's like, you down here? And uh, he's just sort of creeping into like this dark hallway. And then I, you just get like, <laughs> and Leatherface comes hauling ass out of the dark, which. If you remember, Tyler, I said there was one good scare in that movie. I remember that was the scare I was talking about. When I watched this movie the first time, I was like, oh, Leatherface. <laughs> and uh, he chases Homie. Uh, and Homie's trying to get up the stairs. And he just can't do it. And Leatherface just meat hooks him in the back and uh, pulls him pulls him down the stairs. And that's about that's about it. It looks like he, he's like pulling the stairs down with him. It's really yeah. like a crazy... I don't know. It's not a crazy scene, but it's pretty Yeah. Pretty something. Um, and so as this is happening, fucking Homegirl has led Trey Songs into the barn where she's like, There's something crazy going on over here and then he lifts up like a a, a fucking bucket and it's just like some whiskey and two shot glasses and then he turns around and she's like stripping or whatever. And uh Yeah, so that, that whole thing's going on. She's stripping, but she's almost just butt naked, like Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I guess technically that's stripping, but yeah. she was like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so this is what, then the uh, homegirl's alone in the house. This is when she goes into the fucking room, and then as she closes, like, a door that has a mirror, she sees a dead person in the chair behind her that we talked about. We're not sure if that's supposed to be the grandma or who the fuck that was supposed to be, uh, but she's just hanging out dead in the chair. So she's like, oh, fuck, and she goes running downstairs. 
And this is when you get, I do think is a cool shot of her just seeing Leatherface with his back turned to her in the kitchen. And he like turns around and he's like cutting fingers off of dude's severed hand. And, yeah, uh, like pruning shears. Or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, he, she goes to run, but he like catches her and just throws her down. She hits her head on the table and gets knocked out. And I was like, okay, well that's, you know, uh, so leather takes her down to the basement. Uh, this is when she sees hitchhiker dude dead. Uh, and then Leatherface picks up her friend and puts him on the meat hook. And then you get probably the goriest kill in the franchise. Up the only one I can think of that matches it is uh, fucking Beecher from the last movie we watched. Because it's kind of the same thing, except uh, fucking Homeboy was holding him down and Leather sawed up through him from the bottom. But he hangs yeah, him up and you get fucking and just sawed through the half of him. Half of them? <laughs> Saws them in half. Saws them in uh, half, yeah, and kills them. To be fair, he does, like, reach out and grab them. Yeah. And Leatherface did not appreciate that. No. Um, and so that dude's dead, which that was a pretty solid death. Uh, homegirl gets up, starts hauling ass. She goes into the family graveyard, and there's just an open plot with an open casket that she's like, I'm going to go in there. And so she goes and lays in the casket and closes the door. And then, uh, but f classic horror movie shit, she just can't, she's like, hur, hur. <laughs> sounds like a fucking dog, like, in the casket, uh, and so Leatherface you're hears her. You're skipping over the best part. Oh, yeah? Where she, like, running out of the house, and there's literally, like, seven stairs, she just falls down, eats shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, every stair, she's, like, hidden. And then she jumps up, and she's like, oh! And then she runs, and there was, like, I don't even know how you describe the height of that fence. It's like maybe a foot tall, right? Like it's like stepping... Kevin Hart height. <laughs> Good lord, <laughs> the man's taller than that. But anyway, it's a very small fence, and she goes to jump over it, eats shit again, just yeah. straight down, like face first. And I laughed so hard; it took all the horror out of this movie for me. Yeah, and I was like, and it was a belly laugh. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I just <laughs> realized as you were talking about this. This is one of the few Texas Chainsaw movies where no one jumps out a window. Like, that's become, like, a, a staple. Yeah. <laughs> of the window jump. But, yeah, so, yeah, yeah all, all that yeah. happens. She hides in this casket. Uh, Leatherface hears her. He starts revving up the chainsaw. This is when you get your classic. If you're watching in 3D, he's sawing through the fucking casket and it's coming at you. She, like, turns on her side. So he's like sawing through, and I assume in his mind he's like getting her, you know. Yeah. But she's on her side, which still I was like, why don't you just open the casket, Leatherface, and then you could like, you know. Uh, as this is going on, her friends are in the barn here, and they like, yeah, fuck, it. and they come out and they're like, what the fuck? And the girl's like, hey, and then Leatherface like turns his head to look at him, and he gets up and starts running. Uh, and Such so. A note. If you're ever with a girl and you see a guy with a chainsaw in a hole yeah. doing something and she yells, hey, just trip that bitch then. Yeah. <laughs> just run because, like, if she loves you, she won't yell, hey, at the yeah. guy with a chainsaw in a hole. Yeah. Because that was the dumbest. I it mean, was, I get it. Yeah. Um, and so Leatherface comes running over there. They lock the barn. Uh, she finds a shotgun. Just, like, chilling and I think, a truck. Is that where she yeah. found it? Yeah. yeah, it's like a, a gun rack in a truck. Yeah. And so she comes out, and this is when you get a very uh, squeaky, uh, Welcome to Texas, motherfucker! <laughs> and she shoots through the fucking the thing, and they're like, Did you get him? Did you get him? Uh, and then they're like, I hear something coming. And it's supposed to, like, build suspense, even though it's very clearly, like, a car coming towards them. And I was like, well, unless Leatherface is driving in this fucking movie uh and so it's alexandra dario back in their van and she drives in and it's like get in and trace on's like move over he's gonna drive little did they know that's the worst fucking decision <laughs> they could have ever made because uh as they're doing their getaway they have such a big lead on this guy yeah, right? all, all they have to do when they get he's to the foot. fence yeah is when they get to the fence, is get out. It's four numbers, and it and the gates open, and that would be the end of the movie. They'd be out of there, right? I don't even think they have to put the code in because they're, the, they're on the inside. So I think yeah, I think she's like wait for the gate to open. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Trey Songs is like we don't have time, and he decides he's gonna ram this iron bar fence 
Uh, and it goes as bad uh, about as well as you would have think it would go, which is just <laughs> a dead stop. And that fucking stalls the car. Car is dead. So now they're. I don't understand. I'm not sure if that would stall a car. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But if it like broke the radiator or something, okay. Yeah. Car problems, but you'd still be driving. I mean, yeah. I hit that deer. I just drove to work. Yeah. So So. they, uh, yeah. So he's trying to rev it, and at this point, Leatherface is like caught up, and uh, finally he gets the car started. He starts to drive away, and Leatherface, you get a shot of him sawing through. Someone's calling. Let's pause. So this isn't just an audio of the fucking phone ringing. So you get a shot of uh, of Leatherface sawing into the front tire of the uh, the car. So I had a problem with this. Okay, that tire should have popped. Should have done something. Yeah, but it, it did nothing. Yeah, he sawls through it, and it, it may as well just been nothing. Yeah, nothing happens. Yeah, like no air. No, you don't even hear a. Tss. No, <laughs> it's just like a piece of rubber he saw through. Yeah. Um, and so they try to speed off, and you get a shot of Leatherface just standing there watching them, because then the car fucking flips over and wrecks. Uh, Man, that's lucky for him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, then when they wake up, you look over, and Trey Songs has taken the windshield to the neck, and he's dead, which is well-deserved, the fucking moron. Um, <laughs> uh, they... Uh, Leatherface starts trying to saw at them when they're down in the... Uh, they're on, like, the roof of the car, and he's trying to saw down at them or whatever. Uh, homegirl manages to get out, but her friend's still in there, so she's, like... And her friend takes, like, a slash to the stomach. Uh, so her friend's fucked up, and she's like, hey, fucking asshole, come, come follow me, you know? And so they go running through the woods. She gets into a carnival... Wait. Yeah, well, they set that up earlier where they're like, "You with the carny that's in town?" Yeah, uh, and you get you get a fucking uh, a terrible reference to saw. I think I loved it. I, I like, hated it. Parts. Which is uh, they have pig face with a saw coming out to meet Let, and she's like, "You want to play a game?" And then Leatherface like, Arr, Arr, and she's like, "Ah," and goes running off or whatever. Well, she's chasing people out of a haunted house. And yeah, I'm, I'm guessing Saul was big at this time. 2013 and it was probably it was coming to an end i think the last one so she was like out with it you know trying to act big and bad or whatever uh-huh. and then she turns around and there's like what six foot five yeah another face with a real chainsaw and he just revs it once and she runs off yeah and i was like yeah put that movie in its place you know i was like it was a point of pride i was like it's kind of them shitting on saw i feel yeah i don't know if anyone else saw it that way but I was like, fuck yeah, get out of here. John, whatever his name is. <laughs> I don't remember his name. From I, this, think that this song. I think that is his name, John. It's John something, yeah. But That's the hey. weird thing. Is the last name is more prominent. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, so they he chases her through the fucking carnival. She jumps on uh, the fucking the back of a, uh, a Ferris wheel. And she's just hanging on. So Leatherface is like, okay. And he just goes to the other side to wait for her to come down. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty good. Uh, but then as she's coming down, this cop that we haven't mentioned up to this point, that he only really had one scene, which was when she was in town, she was looking and he for was, firewood. And, and he was hitting on her creepily like. Yeah. And so he, see, he sees all this going on. So he runs over and he's like, hey, put the fucking saw down. And so <laughs> Leatherface... You get a super fake 3D chainsaw throw where it's at the camera. I still enjoyed it though. Yeah, yeah, and dude not dodges it. I enjoy I enjoyed what came next, which yeah. is you get a shot of Leatherface, which I'm not sure if he was, but to me it looked like he was <laughs> just running into the, the woods. woods. <laughs> yeah. And I I couldn't help but think to myself like the whoop. whoop <laughs> like running away, and it was, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, but uh, what is that, man? What? I'm reading this note. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, okay. I remember what this is. So after this, she gets taken to the police station, and this is where you meet the sheriff from the beginning. We forgot to mention that the Hartman dude is like the mayor of the town. 
Uh, I don't think you know till then. Okay, yeah, you just see him. He was, he was there, and he offered her a bunch of money for a house in town. Yeah. But you don't really know. I mean, you know who he is because you've seen the beginning. Yeah. But she doesn't know who he is. Um. Yeah, and so, the, and then she starts reading all this shit about, uh, you know, they slaughtered the Sawyers, you know, at, at this thing. And uh, and the sheriff is giving his statement. And he's like, they were going to give up and they came out and killed him. And this is when, because like you said, at the end of the movie, you're like, yeah, go get them, boy. I was watching this and I was like, man, fuck these people. I was like, I'm supposed to give a shit that these Sawyers got fucking murdered and massacred after all the shit we've seen them do to other people. And like that, that what we saw in the first one, because like get rid of everything else we've seen up to this point. But the first one, those were just like their last victims. Like they had killed at the end of the movie. I don't remember how many they say they killed or whatever, but they had killed. And this whole movie, you know, they try to make this Hartman guy out to be the bad guy. And sure, I guess you could say what he was doing with Alexandra Daddario, where he started kidnapping her and was gonna kill her because she was part of the family. That's not cool. But up to that point, you know, and she's like, uh, she's like, I'll tell the town. The town doesn't know. It's the dirty little secret. And I was like, do you think the town is really going to give a shit that this guy killed these fucking cannibals? <laughs> like, I was so, I, when I watched it before, when I watched it when it came out, I was with you. Where at the end, I was like, yeah, Leatherface. Watching it again, I was like, fuck these guys. I was like, I don't give a shit about them. <laughs> like, anyway. <laughs> how dare you yeah it's like um it's like that piece of shit uh <laughs> it's like uh devil's rejects where that fucking cop kidnaps the fireflies spoiler for devil's rejects kidnaps the fireflies and he's like torturing them and you're supposed to feel bad for the fireflies fuck them like we've seen everything they did they killed his brother in the first movie and it's like, I don't feel bad for these pieces of shit. Like, fuck the Sawyers. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> is, is like, it's the lesser of two evils, right? But you're saying that they're not the lesser. Yeah, I don't think they are. Like, besides the Sawyer shit and what they were doing with Alexandra Daddario, you, I haven't really seen too many, like, they're out raping and pillaging or something, you know? Well, yeah, but it's, it's one of those things to where it's like absolute power, right? So this mayor is just doing whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I guess in a perfect world, they get the revenge and then die at the end. Right? And then you're, you're okay with it. Yeah. But, like, it's not really what happens. No, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, and, like, I won't spoil it because the last movie we have to cover, Leatherface, which Tyler and me have both seen. Uh, it's been a while since I've watched it. Yeah, but, I'll watch it again. Yeah, but in that movie, you get even more backstory as to why this Hartman fuck hates the Sawyers. And it's completely justified. Like, Is that when, the same guy? Yeah, that's... Uh, so the guy in the, the next one is uh, the sheriff uh, from True Detective Season 3. Yeah, that yeah, guy's partner. Okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, we'll we'll get, but stuff happens, and it's very obvious why the Hartmans would be like, yeah, fuck the Sawyers. <laughs> so, so we, well, no, I don't think we're there yet. I think we're right at the point to where it was like one of the probably my best, best of worst of hint or whatever, or whatever. Uh -huh. Is like when she like leans forward in in the back of the cop car, and she's like, "You're a, a Hartnet, whatever." I hope you're. I hope you're gonna say I, this is worse. I, I love though. that. I, I love that. Fuck, that's, that was that the shittiest part, so part. When she it's shoves so her little knife there and she's like, "I'm the yeah. Sawyer," and I was like, yeah. oh, "Fuck you, dude." It made me want to go out and get a Sawyer tattoo, like the S on my titty. <laughs> I'm gonna go get it like tomorrow. Uh, anyway, not, so she's so in good. she's in the police station and she tells them all what happened, and this is when she's reading all the shit. Meanwhile, uh, Mayor Hartman has shown up, and he's talking to the sheriff, and he's like, it's those fucking, you know, uh, the Sawyers or whatever. The Because the, they, they think Leatherface is dead. This is now they're finding out, oh, fuck, he's still alive, you know? Uh, the cop goes to investigate, this random cop goes to investigate the, the crash, 
and the friend's gone. And they tell him to stand by. And he's like, all right, you know. But then he sees a trail of blood. And I think he started following it at first. And then as he started following it, Hartman was like, all right, we'll pull up your phone. And this is when we get the, he's doing the live stream and he's holding his gun out. He's using his phone as both a flashlight and to film so the sheriff and Hartman can watch. Um, so he's walking through the house. And I think as he gets to the, the stairs... He goes, you know, I'm not too sure about this. <laughs> and, uh, and then Hartman's like, what are you, a pussy, you know? And so the dude goes down there. You get, like, a fake-out scare where a rat, like, makes some noise in this room next to him. Uh, and all this shit. He busts into this one room at the very end. And this is where you see dude hanging up, sold in half. Uh, you see Trey Songs there missing his head. Uh, and you get a really bad fake head in a bucket that they show of Trey Songs, uh, and then you see, like, the hitchhiker is still dead, or whatever, and he's like, Ugh. he starts doing the, like, dry heaving shit, um, and, but then, there's the, cla there's, the there's the freezer, and he hears noise come from the freezer, and so they're like, go open it, you know, and so he goes to open the freezer, and once again, you get a call back to the first movie, when they open the freezer and the friend like jumps out, ah, and it was like that. And in that movie, Letterface just like shoves her back in. And this movie, the friend goes ah, and the cop goes ah, and shoots her in the fucking head. And then uh, the Hartman goes, "All right, get out of there, get out of there." Yeah. <laughs> not your fault, not your fault, not Come your on, fault. Me. Yeah. <laughs> and so, dudes like, okay, and he starts to leave. And then Leatherface just fucking comes out with a hatchet. I don't think I've ever seen Leatherface use a hatchet in these movies up yeah. to this point. It's like they're trying to add spice. Yeah. Whatever. And he uh, fucking... Didn't appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And he uh, he hatchets uh, dude to death. Anyway, he gets he gets killed. <laughs> he gets hatcheted. Um, this is when you get a fucking... The classic uh, Leatherface then goes and peels off the cop's face. As he's peeling off the cop's face, like the cop's foot is still like... He's still, like, twitching or whatever. I thought he was still alive at first, but I think it was just, like, post-mortem twitches or whatever. And he Is peels... that what happened with your victim? <laughs> <Yeah. he's> still... <laughs> and he peels off the cop's face, uh, and he goes to make uh, his new face, which I call bullshit because when he peels it off, it's so, like, it's a face yeah. that he just peeled off. Then when he's putting on his face... It's like he sat out in the sun for 40 days or some shit. It's, like, all, like, tight and, like, fucking, you know, like, uh, it, it looks like rawhide or some shit. Like, uh, be honest, when he was taking the mask off, and this might be the whatever, the effects, whatever. Uh, but it just looked like a wet mask that they put on someone's face, right? Yeah. Like, and he took it off, and I at first I was like, "Why is he putting a mask on him?" I was like, that, well, I was like "Man, this isn't like subterfuge, right?" Yeah. He's gonna like he was setting him up to burn or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he puts the the face on, and this is when I think you do get it, an interesting addition that you haven't seen so far. Is Leatherface like sews it to his face, like you yeah. he like sews it into his mouth and shit, so it won't like just come off or whatever. Uh, and I thought that was a cool little little addition that they added. I uh, didn't need to see it for ten minutes. So. Yeah, they and, yeah. And um, it went on for a bit. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so yeah, he kills the cop, sews the fucking the face to his his shit or whatever. Um, this is when fucking homegirl goes to meet up with the grandma's lawyer and she's like why don't you tell me about you know Leatherface or she, whatever she runs off by the yeah, way yeah yeah she, she leaves the police station after she learns everything and he's like why well, I gave you the, the fucking letter why well, you told you to read it and she doesn't say anything cause she's like oh yeah you know but uh this when you find out he's like well what we already knew but he's yeah. like uh he's your cousin you know he's real loyal he's family bound and she's like, well, he sure, you know, didn't seem that loyal. And he's like, he doesn't know it's you, you know. Uh, but, and so then she's like, he's like, you got to get out of here, you know. And so Hartman and them show up as this happened. And she goes running out the back. And the lawyer's like, I'll hold him off. And he just gets, gets pushed aside. <laughs> and that's like it for him. Uh, and as she runs out of the bar, she the, the cop dude is driving by uh, that she had flirted with before. And so she's like, hey, 
you know, give me a ride or whatever. Uh, the fucking crazy. And he's like, all right, hop in, you know. Uh, or give her, give her a ride back to the bar where she's going to go talk to the lawyer. Um, and so he drives to the bar. And then as they're going, she's like, all right, this is it. All right, where are you going? This is it, you know. And you get a shot of the lawyer watching her drive by where she's in the back of the squad car. Uh, and this is when you get your big twist that the cop is uh, Mayor Hartman's kid. And so that, so he's like, I got the bitch locked up, you know. Uh, this is all you get the scene we talked about with uh, her being like, "You're a Hartman, damn, I'm a Sawyer." <laughs> so, so hold on, yeah. And this is gonna be a spoiler for the movie we watched after this. Okay. Doesn't don't they kill his, the guy's daughter? Yeah. They kill in the next one. Spo- spoiler: They kill his daughter and like his brother, and it's like, wait, they kill. So where did so, the kid come from? No, they. Uh, the dude in the movie is this guy's brother. It's his dad. It's his dad. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so it kills his sister and his dad, or whatever. I think. I don't know. Like it's well, confusing. I, th- I don't. Well, when we watch it. They might mention, like, I got a baby boy yeah. at home, you know, or something like that. But, yeah, yeah. so, like, but... It's weird. Um, So they take her Maybe. to this fucking slaughterhouse, uh, and you get a fucking... Where she gets tied up, and then the guy, like, rips her shirt, with, you know, and so you get... Also, I think it's very odd. They, like, tape it. Because there's a shot yeah. where she's, like, falling, and it does not move at all. Uh, I was staring hard, guys. I was looking. I was hoping to tell you. You get a glimpse of Jesus Which, in this film. Weirdly enough, you know, she had a rule. She didn't want to appear nude in, in movies. Uh, but then when the scene was coming up, she told him, she was like, hey, you know, I'll go topless if you guys want. And they were like, ah, it's too gratuitous. And I was like, I was like, well, you're that. F-. I was like, you might as well have just gone like with what you were doing anyway. Uh, so she wouldn't appear fully nude until True Detective the next year. So that was her first... Uh, but it's just fine, right? I'm all for like women having. Like, well, I mean, she wanted to give in, but like, how can I phrase this without having people hate me? If you have like morals like that, that's fine, right? That's great. Mm-hmm. But don't show everything you have, and then four seasons in, then decide that you don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, because then it's like you just used it. Why well, remember? Up and now, well, I remember. Hey, was... I'm talking about a very specific person. Well, that's right what now. I'm going to mention because I remember like because Khaleesi was naked for, like... Ever. I mean, she was mostly naked in season one. I don't remember her doing that much after season... Season three, I know she had, like, a scene in a bathtub when uh, that the Dario dude or whatever comes, and she, like, stands yeah. up all naked. But I remember that, because, like, four seasons, she was like, all right, I'm not doing nude anymore. Which, at that point, yeah. I was like, fair game. You've already locked down yeah. your spot in the show, you know? Yeah. Uh but then, randomly, like, season seven, she, like, goes full nude again. And I don't know if they, I never, if they use a body double for her or something. But I remember being like, oh, shit, I didn't think she was doing this anymore. So, I don't know. It was like, uh, you know, Cersei didn't want to be, and then you find out that, like, that scene wasn't really her naked. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Which, uh, that that scene, uh, one of the few instances of Game of Thrones where you didn't want to see someone naked. And you're just like, I shouldn't be watching <laughs> she's just getting like oh. pelted with tomato, uh, choked with tomatoes and shit. Uh, oh, I love that. I love that scene. Sick fuck. You know, I just well, watch murders. <laughs> well, it's like the whole time she's watching. Like, if I don't know if you, anyone here watched, I'm sure everyone who's watched this has watched Game of Thrones. But anyways, like Cersei's such like uh, like vindictive, right? So the whole time you're walking, is she's walking. You're like, she's like brewing something in her mind, right? Mm-hmm. Like, she will be back. She will, like, rise. I don't know. I think Cersei's probably the best character in Game of Thrones. Anyways. Oh, it's the hell. Um, but, anyway, they go, they go to the fucking thing. He, she gets tied up. Dude leaves her for a second. Uh, and then as he leaves her, Leatherface, which had heard they were going to the slaughterhouse from the police oh. car out front. This is the most like disturbing part of this movie for me. This is my worst of. Okay. Is uh he hears that they have that they're going, you know, he's like, Meet me at the take her to the old slaughterhouse. Yeah. 
And in his mind, he's like, this is the girl who got away. I got to go get her. Yeah. Because the last girl got away and killed his whole family. Yeah, that's a big thing is the his whole family's gone because of a mistake he made. So the lawyer tells her, he's like, he's not going to stop looking for you because, you know, it reminds him of the last time. So he opens up his, like, tool cupboard of chainsaws yeah. and, like, all his murder toys. Uh-huh. And you're like, all right, no problem. And he grabs a chainsaw, and it's just a random chainsaw. It's just a saw, yeah, special. it doesn't really matter. And then he grabs a tie. Yeah, man. Why? What? I don't know. I and wonder. He on, he's I, wearing it the whole time. Yeah. And I'm like. I think it's supposed to be the tie from his suit that he wore with the pretty woman mask. And maybe it's like a weird. Uh... Yeah. The saw thing was weird, though, because like. You know, you watch it, and for a minute, your brain tries to trick you and be like, oh, it's the saw from the first movie. But it's not, because the saw from the first movie got burned up in the house, and it hangs in the bar that we were talking yeah, about they, earlier. They show it to you, yeah. like, five minutes before so, the scene. So it's just a random saw. It doesn't really matter at all. He has a bunch of them, though. Yeah, it should have showed him putting on his apron. I was hoping they did, like, a... Uh, like a nice little Easter egg where in the back you could see that golden chainsaw that uh, fucking that Ego Mortensen had yeah. given them in part three, but not not that I could see. But anyway, he comes up behind a homegirl who's tied up and he like puts the chainsaw on her, on her shoulder, which uh, if like we've seen in the past, Leatherface uses that chainsaw for some very suggestive. Uh, manners yeah. so it kind of it was like he's just slapping his cock on her shoulder i was like what? <laughs> but uh and she's like ah you know and he goes around and he like revs up the chainsaw and he's, he's doing like a slow-mo like him coming at her chest uh <laughs> and, another 3d scene yeah also. but then as he's about to kill her he sees the s and he's like oh shit and he like pulls out her gag and she's like, it's me, Vanessa, or whatever her fucking name was. And so he's like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> and he, he cuts her down. Uh, but as he cuts her down, Hartman has showed up. And he starts just beating the shit out of him. And this is when, like I said, you're supposed to feel bad for Leatherface. Because he's getting double teamed uh, by the mayor and some, some just random guy. The yeah. fucking guy who at the beginning was like, I wish I had a piece like that running around, you know. Oh, is that the That's guy? That's the guy, yeah. on that or whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, and they're beating geez. the shit out of him. And he's down. He's, he's like. He's like ah, whimpering. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, homegirl starts to make a break for it. But then she decides, oh, you know, I'm going to go back, you know. So she goes back. She grabs a pitchfork. Dude is turning on a meat grinder where they're going to. They've wrapped a, a chain around Leatherface's neck. And they're going to pull him into this fucking meat grinder and kill him. She comes by and she's like, hey, asshole. And she stabs him in the gut. The weakest stab looking stab. Seen, yeah. yeah. And that, uh, that kills him. Uh, instantly. Yeah. And so this is when you get, because fucking dude's still hitting Leatherface as he's getting pulled towards the meat grinder. And she goes, hey. And he turns around and he's like, oh, you're back, you know? And she goes, yeah. And she tosses the chainsaw over the Leatherface. And she goes, do your thing, cuz. And, uh, he fucking, he starts taking the chain off his neck and gets the saw. The dude, like, starts to fight homegirl, and he, like, hits her once or something. And then as he goes to hit her again, Leatherface is in the back, and he, like, rrr, 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 and, like, revs up the chainsaw. That was the part where you, like, I got goosebumps. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I was like, fuck yeah. And, and then it just goes down. Yeah, down. and so you get a, a little shitty, like, he's got a crowbar, and Leatherface is, like, dodging it. And then he just, like, goes around the back and carves in the dude's Achilles. And so he's fucked at that point. Uh, meanwhile, as this has happened, the lawyer had shown up to where the sheriff was and told him, hey, this guy's taking uh, this lady. And they, the sheriff's like, fuck, I know where they're going. So he showed up. And he's, like, up on a balcony aiming a gun at Leatherface. Uh, and the homegirl's like, don't shoot, you know? And Leatherface keeps, like, chin, chin, like moving dude's hands so he's getting pushed further back to the meat grinder. Uh, eventually he's like hanging on to it uh and dude's like fucking shoot this guy <laughs> you know but he doesn't shoot him uh and leatherface just like goes and cuts off guy's hand and he slides down in the meat grinder and gets all grinded up 
Uh, you do then get a shot that I appreciated, which is Leatherface then <laughs> kicking off dude's feet into the meat grinder. With hands, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then this is when uh, the sheriff reiterates his, uh, he uses it against Hartman, where he's like, an eye for an eye, you know, and he leaves. Um, also, well, I don't... He, he says, clean this clean shit up. Clean this shit up, up. yeah. It's... And they don't. <laughs> yeah. Just like... um, also, at this moment, as I'm talking, I realize that the sun has nothing to do with this ending at all. Because the, yeah. the Hartman shows up and he's like, alright, get out of here. This isn't anything for a cop to see. So the sun's still just out. You know, he's just around, I guess. Um, That's why I think he might be the cop from the second one. Or the cop in the new one. But the new one's a prequel. So yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. I'm yeah. telling you, it doesn't. Yeah. Like... Um, so they, they go back to the house... And she sort of, she like wipes Leatherface blood off of his mouth. Uh, and then he goes down to where his little hole is. This, well, he like freaks out and like knocks her hand away. She tries to like touch his face. Yeah. And oh. he's like, get out of here. Uh, he was cool with her rubbing his mouth with a cloth, but he didn't want her touching her for some reason. Um, yeah, it was really weird. I, this is when I didn't you, understand the whole ending of this movie. Yeah, this is when you get her finally reading the note that her grandma left her. Uh, which is played by Sally, like we said from the from the OG, the survivor, and she's like, you know, he's your family. Just look after him, you know, all the shit. And remember, you're a Sawyer, family's family, or whatever. Uh, and so Leatherface is going into his little room, and as he turns around, he sees that she's coming behind him, and she picks up his plate and like goes to presumably make him some food or whatever. And then Leatherface closes the door. And that's the end of the movie. Unless you stick around till after the credits. Oh, was there an after? I didn't see after yeah. credits. Yeah, and the after credits is just a stupid little joke where it's the parents, her parents, and she's like, oh, look at this place. I can't believe she invited us. And then the door opens and then, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> really? Yeah, and so presumably she has a Leatherface kill her parents. So. Also, this whole time, I forgot to mention, Leatherface has a picture of all the people that they've taken after they slaughtered everyone. And everyone he killed, he, like, peels off their face. So he has, like, a list. <laughs> of uh, oh, That guy has to be on it. Well, no, he wasn't there for the picture, right? Because, no, he went Yeah, back. they went back. So he was on, and yeah. she was, too. So, um, yeah, so there you go. So that's the end of Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, yeah. Let's do... Best of, worst of. Uh, my best of. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my best of uh, has to be Leatherface's run back into the woods. Like that was too good. I I was chuckling. Uh, if you wanted like an actual moment, it would probably be Homeboy getting sawed in half. I thought that was a pretty solid death for a movie that like or a series that for as gross as it can get, hasn't really had that many cool deaths in it. Like, it's got some, but, like, it's no, Friday the 13th, that's its selling point. It's like, hey, we're gonna kill some motherfuckers, it's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> but this movie's more of, like, uh, despair and then some deaths along the way. But, uh... I feel... I feel like the... the content of the movie is gory and scary enough mm -hmm. that they don't have to have super gore does that make sense yeah. like the setting like lends to the, the movie enough to yeah. where they can just kind of be like meh uh and so then anyway worst of uh i mean it's gonna make tyler mad but it, it no i mean yeah the, it has to be the fucking i'm a sawyer and stabs through the fucking thing i was like okay <laughs> so there you go it was, uh, I don't know, it's like a person finding out, like, their heritage, right? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, there's a classic, like, rivalry in the South, like, the McCoys and whatever. I don't remember who it is. The Hatfields and McCoys. And they're, like, two families that, like, just fought each other to the death, like, forever. Oh. And, uh, I don't know. It just seemed like she finally found, like, her place where she belonged. Hmm. But, I mean, she didn't seem too upset about any of her dead friends, by the way. 
that's the weird part. Yeah. It's like, hey, Leatherface, I'm gonna feed you now. Even though you, uh, you know, pretty much killed all of my buddies. Yeah. But and she never knew that her that they were fucking either. And to be fair, they were dressed pretty skimpy, but I don't think she had time to realize that as she yeah. picked them up. So that's the least of her worries. Yeah, but... she has no reason to not like her friends anymore. But I guess she just sort of looks over that. So anyway, Tyler, what was your best of worst of? Um, you know, it's it's weird. Like, there's a lot of like heart touching moments in this. This definitely is the most uh, sympathetic Leatherface, I think. That they, yeah, the other side. They, right? like I said, they want you to feel bad for Leatherface in this movie. I think I could write a better story where you feel worse for Leatherface, and it would make more sense. But anyways. I almost think the one before this where, uh, oh no, it's not, I don't remember which one it is. It might be the one coming up, so I won't say nothing. Okay. But, um, I don't know. It's like, uh, you know, this is like a Fast and Furious movie, you know, it's like family is everything. So, I don't know, this, this movie has a lot of weird scenes that I, I like a lot. Like the, you know, I'm a Sawyer, you know, knife through the window, which is kind of cool. Um, the whole get him cuz. If she would have tossed him a hammer. <laughs> like, think about it. If she tossed him a hammer instead of a chainsaw. Yeah. I mean, I know it's Leatherface. And for some reason, Leatherface's icon is his chainsaw. But that dude's killed probably 300% more people. With, with hammers. Hammer. Yeah. Yeah, than he's or, ever yeah. done with a chainsaw. Hey, by the way, can I just say, like, I don't, I don't know whose decision it was to drop Massacre. From the, why, I don't know. I don't know why they just went with Texas Chainsaw 3D. Like, uh, you know. It's not a big complaint, but it just seems weird they would drop the massacre part. Maybe, I don't, there might, I don't want to get too deep. Maybe there was some big, like, tragedy near when the movie came out. You know, like a mass shooting or something. And so they dropped it. It's like, uh... When the what was that movie with uh, Ben Stiller and them where they were the watch not the Night Watch or whatever, and the aliens were there, but that movie was called like Night Watch, and then the uh, the Trayvon Martin stuff happened and they had to just change it to the Watch because it was a it was a big thing. In case anyone like, missed the Trayvon I, Martin I stuff, <laughs> yeah, I know the movie. Yeah. I watched the movie. Jonah Hill was in it too. I think Owen Wilson might have been in it. No, it was Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn. That's it. Uh, Jonah so Hill. Yeah, and then like that British dude or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what was your worst of? Or be- did you answer best of or worst of yet? I don't think you did. <laughs> My best of is just the general family feeling of the movie. All like right. Um, my worst of I don't I don't know. I guess just the incredibly open plot holes cuz like the whole time you see the Sawyer family, they're like this but just poor like no money having whatever <laughs> and then she shows up and this lady has like a mansion like a legitimate mansion uh-huh with like butler quarters and all kinds of stuff and you're just like where did this come what i don't i don't understand yeah so and like you said she was making bone art so it would have been a lot cooler if she went into the cave and realize that, like, that's, you know, it's part of her, right? Like, you know, I guess that's what that was supposed to do, right? Is show that she's a Sawyer, even if she isn't a name or uh-huh. whatever. So, it, I don't know. Like I said. Yeah. It's it's really weird. There's, like, I don't know. There's a lot of weird shit in this movie that just... Like, you get a gun for the first time, I think. Well, no, they've had guns, but... They've had guns. I just don't understand why more people didn't use them. Like, if yeah. you're going to the slaughterhouse to kill some, like, legitimate monster... Yeah, why you, are you crowbarring them? Yeah, like... Yeah. Uh, and it's Texas, so, like, they, they love their guns. Yeah. So, it... it I, I don't... I don't know. It's really... Yeah. Like I said, this movie gets a four, because the more you think about it, the worse it is. Uh-huh. So, just watch it. Homegirl's amazingly hot. Um, you literally get lost in her eyes, like, half the time when she's talking. Like, 
she'll have a scene where she's telling you about like her dead parents or whatever and yeah. she didn't know she was adopted and st- like there's a reason i can't remember what she says exactly yeah because like i was just fo- i mean and i'm not like a shallow guy like this lady yikes so call me hmm. she's, she's not gonna call us no no. But, they do a thing in Baywatch where, uh, like, the doughy uh, lifeguard dude has a crush on her. And then, spoiler, at the end of the movie, she ends up getting with him. And it's one of the things to be like, look, it, you know, she, you could have a chance. And it's like, no. <laughs> but, well, hey, let's do this real fast. So we won't, because after we do the next movie, which is just called Leatherface, uh, you know, I want to have us do our ranking. Of what we think is worst to best. Uh, but spoiler, the next movie is kids. Like, Leatherface is... This was the last movie with a Leatherface, you know? So, uh, I thought it'd be fun real fast if you could go through your brain and we could rank worst to best Leatherface performance. Because I, oh, I think I have my list pretty solid down. Well, it's because you thought of the idea. No, I just thought of it now. I swear to God. I didn't, I didn't pre-plan this. I'm like, I'm going to get them good. <laughs> like, well, why? I'll, I'll go ahead. So, worst Leatherface to me, and we won't get, get into the movies yet. Movie, you know, it could be a good Leatherface, but a bad movie. But worst Leatherface to me, it has to be part three Leatherface. Which I, 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 didn't, I didn't dig... He didn't have anything going for him in that movie, I don't think. Uh, well, what's the one where he's barely in it? Is that four? Four, he's barely in it, yeah. The one with the, Four where is the where he's instructor. dressed as a girl the whole time. Yeah, there's that one where the drill instructor, it might have been five. Oh, that was uh, the last one we just watched. He's barely in yeah. that one, yeah. Yeah, so But that keep has in mind... Be... But keep in mind that guy was the the Leatherface in the movie before too. So that dude, I would just count him as one Leatherface performance. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's my worst. Really? I can't. It's so hard because they all blend together. All right. Well, I'm going. So leather number three, or worst of is part three. Next worst would be probably Next Generation, even though. Like I said, that's probably my number two movie. Next worst would be, uh, it probably it probably be part two, fucking uh, Leatherface, and then number four I would say, which at this point w- would be the second best is the prequel, Leatherfaces, and then best of is Gunnar Hansen, and the OG. Because I'm taking into account that guy was also Leatherface in the first one that they made. And that I mean, one was a scary Leatherface. The OG one is, is really good. Yeah. Uh, the one in the second is kind of a cartoon character, even though he one has is, the best scare. He does have probably the best scare out of any of them. But he does spend uh, most of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like dancing but Yeah. And stuff. It's so hard. Like, I don't know. Because the first one, you get that forest scene, which is pretty fucking scary. Yeah. So, especially if you time warp back somehow and watch it before that was like a thing. Yeah. Right? Like, you're just watching. Yeah. If you go, if you go scares, that like the part two where he comes running out of the fucking doorway out of nowhere and like hits a leather or a chop top in his plate. He's like, "You dented my plate, you son." (laughs) Uh, like that is probably the best Leatherface character, and then number two would probably be the Woods, where I hear something, Sally. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, all right. Well, thanks for watching. We only have one right. more. I couldn't give a better list. Yeah, because yeah. I don't ever remember them. Like I remember them, yeah. right? But all right, we'll get your list together when we do Leatherface. We gotta, we gotta rank these bitches. Um. But anyway, we just need to rank all the movies, not just based on Leatherface. Well, no, that's what the next one it would be the movies, oh. yeah. Which I kind of hate. Yeah. I think in Halloween we might have done, but I looked back at Halloween and I kind of because we never r- ranked our Halloween movies, and I kind of was like, oh man, oh that's because three wins hand is. <laughs> 
I love how during the review of that movie, like we all shit on it, and then over time, that's become like you're like number three, baby. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, next up would be Leatherface, the final installment until eventually they make another one, which I think they're in the process of making. Uh, they're also in the process of making a game, apparently, from the same people who made the Friday 13th game. Uh, and weirdly enough, like, we have a gaming channel, like, so every now and then we mention it on here. But weirdly, like, if that came out, I wonder if we, I just put a Leatherface playthrough on here. Or whatever. I don't know what the game would be. Now, it's it's a I don't want to say slippery slope because I yeah. don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but you you know we we have a lot of horror games on there. Yeah, the spooky. Yeah, I probably I probably just link it whenever it comes out if we do it. But um, no, it's, yeah, yeah. So next up will be Leatherface, and then we're done with Text Chainsaw. We have some ideas for other overtimes. What would be next? Uh, but keep 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 in touch for that one. Uh, Friday, keep in touch. I know I said it weird. Don't worry about it. Friday, uh, Beetlejuice. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, so I'm probably gonna watch it. I gotta watch it today because we're gonna do the podcast spoiler for tomorrow. So I'm gonna watch it probably when we. I get think done. I think I might be out of town for this podcast. No, yeah. I've got to go to uh, Savannah. Anyway, I forgot Which I had a sip town. of coffee. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Beetlejuice Friday. So stay tuned for that. I don't think it'll. I don't. We'll see. I have a feeling the guy who even picked the movie isn't going to be there for the. No, but no, he'll he'll be there. It's going to be a solo podcast. It's, it's going to be me. I, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll sit here and go through the whole fucking movie. And then I'll be like, okay, all right, wait. guys. Will you film the movie, film the review, but then do a whole nother one as you dress as Beetlejuice <laughs> and put it in and edit it in to where you're talking to yourself? The whole as, time. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> anyway. You, you, you might have to. Yeah. Friday, Beetlejuice. Uh, and yeah. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> nice. I I gotta be at work in like eight hours or something. Yeah, yeah. So you sleep a little, tight. <laughs> a little long. Yeah. yeah, it's overtime. It better be on my paycheck. That's yeah. all I'm saying. All right. Anyway, see you guys Friday. We'll get paid enough for this. You know?